right, so today we're going to talk a little bit about um, three versus one situations. What do we do? Um, sometimes we're going to get caught in the persistent universe where we have overwhelming odds against us. So how do we best manage this situation? Okay. So what I want everyone to do is perform this little thought experiment. Imagine that there is an imaginary bubble surrounding every fighter um, in the engagement zone. And what I want you to do is I want you to imagine that that is the threat bubble. Because we know that anywhere within 800 meters, it's a threat. Anything above 800 meters, you're really not applying any real damage. So as we move forward, just imagine this imaginary bubble. Now, when you're beginning your fight, the first thing you want to do is you want to get a feel for the distance separation between the enemies and yourself. So the best way to engage any kind of you know, multi-situation like this is get your speed up, blast right through the group, or blast like past them within a relatively safe distance if you can. And what you want to do is you want to keep your eyes, so the two white lines represent where your head should be looking, and what you should be doing is you should be trying to take a look at what the distance is between the enemy fighters. So are they clustered together really tight, or are they starting to separate? And here's what you're going to start doing. So as you continue to fly circles around and keep on trying to, to get the group of hostiles to separate, once enough of them have separated larger than 800 meters, what you're going to do is you're going to form your attack opportunity. So in the best case scenario, the enemies are all coming from a single direction rather than all around you. And if they are coming from all around you, what you want to do is you want to continue with your speed up to keep separating and keep creating distance between the enemy fighters so that as soon as one of them is a little bit too far from the rest of the group, that is your opportunity to take a shot. That is your attack opportunity where you can get a kill. So let's say you were successful, but now things have gotten a little more complicated. In your efforts to kill, we've noticed that both the arrow and the saber in this situation have closed to within combat distances, 800 meters or closer. In this situation, you're up against too much firepower, you're up against too hard of a handicap, it's just not a fight worth taking. So what we want to do is we want to reset the fight. We want to use our main thrusters, we want to get out as quick and fast as we can outside of 800 meters. <clears throat> We don't need to disengage entirely. We just need to create space of 800 meters or more. Once we've created the space, we repeat what we did from step two or three, which is simply pull people to get, like pull people apart so they're 800 meters apart or more, hopefully more, so that you have more time on target, and engage one target at a time. Manage your throttle, manage your, manage your, uh, your distance, and pick a target one at a time to reduce the numbers. Theoretically, if you're able to perform these, you should be eventually able to wear down the numbers against the enemies and bring it down to a 1v1 fight where you can change up your strategy and go for a more prolonged kind of fight. Typically, it's best to take out the small, easier to kill fighters first rather than the more sluggy, more tankable ships like the Saber. In this situation, we would rather take the saber out last because it takes so long to burn it down with its shields and its hull hit points, and the saber doesn't really have the opportunity to chase and engage and stay on the arrow. It's best to take out the light fighters first, reduce the numbers, and then go from there. I wanted to do a different style of breakdown for this video where I give you guys the tactical analysis before the fight begins so that you have an idea of what you're looking at as the fight progresses. So in this situation again we have the two arrows and the saber and we're going to enter the engagement zone with a nice long joust, get our distance. Again, same practice, set your flare counts, dodge any kind of incoming missiles. I'm looking at what's actually going to be engaging me. I'm looking at my distances. I'm looking around trying to see okay who's been separated from the group. Who's flying together? Okay here we go. I've got someone separated right here. Turns out it's the saber. And I'm thinking, do I really want to take a saber on when we've got two other arrows with me? I mean, the obvious answer is no, I don't. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull ourselves some range. Again, looking at my different ranges here, 
Okay, I've got an arrow that's a little bit separated, again, outside of 800 meters, and he's got high energy. He's in a high energy state, which means his velocity is so high that it's going to take him time to bring himself back down to zero. So here's my second pass on him. Here's my third pass. I've got a few tracers coming my way. And again, two guys right now. Now they've entered combat range, but I've already taken one of the three out. Now I'm going to separate some distance some more. Again, taking some shots from these guys. I'll, I'll do some probing shots. And again, we don't have to worry about engaging, like disengaging entirely. We just need to get 800 meters or more away from them. We don't need to disengage so far. In this situation here, I've got, I've got pin target on them. I've got the good angle. I've got where I want to go. But again, I've, I'm fighting two people at the same time, and I stayed a little too long. Now, let's back it up a second. So right before we engaged the second arrow we had we had slightly separated the distance with the arrow but the problem was the saber kept his distance very close in this situation the proper reaction was to actually disengage again reset the fight but at the time I thought mm, I can probably try to get that arrow and you'll see I pay the price for it this is a mistake during the fight that all of you guys need to be aware of because even though I was surviving this and I got out of this alive this right here is a mistake. When you see the distance between the two ships closer than 800, that saber right on my top right, if you underestimate your opponents, they are going to kill you. I was very lucky in this situation. In, in most cases, I should have died here. So as the fight continues, so we're in the combat zone. Again, we're going into our simple corkscrew motion, lining our wings up with the vector direction of the enemy arrow, take, taking opportunities to pick our shots. And there's the splash. But notice how we've got ourselves with no shields down to red. We are almost dead. This was the mistake I was talking to you about. And this is what, you know, you will be punished for if you don't execute on, on, on discipline and keeping your distance and managing your targets one at a time. Now, we're going to use our corkscrew motion. We're going to keep on moving towards our target again, right? Always corkscrew towards to close or separate distance. We're going to keep working on our angles and keep trying to engage that saber. This pretty much brings the video to a close, guys. I'm going to return the audio to the original fight here. You can enjoy the rest of it. Works through as we close distance, right? And as we get closer to the edge, again, right? Works through to get anything off. Close distance. Keep the shields down by keeping pressure on them. And then as he goes through the merge here, try to get up and under him. I got him down to red now, so I am winning the attrition. And by attrition, I mean like uh, I might get his shields down, do a few hits, and then he disengages. But he takes a lot of damage when he does that. Again, three three flares, pop them off, no problem. Slowly walk my way in, corkscrew my way in. Again, right, stay within that zone. Turn my nose over. Close the distance as best I can. And there it is. Damn, I was gonna say if we get back there quick. And Remember, guys, distance control equals your victory if you can manage your speed, separate your opponents into smaller, more bite-sized, I guess you could say, um, opportunities, and then go from there. Theoretically, there is no limit to how many people you could you can engage with the strategy. But the simple counter to this is if you're going to take on somebody, uh, you know, take them on where your wingman and yourself are close together. If these, um, if these pilots were able to stay within 800 meters of each other the whole time, the likelihood of me being successful against a gang like that would be extremely low, right? So be sure to keep training, guys. Keep flying every day. Get shot down nine times. Get up ten, right? Um... Thank you so much for all the folks who've been supporting me and uh, all you guys commenting on the video. Please like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more of this content. And I will see all of you in the next video.